Yeah. Those are good things to think about. So it's good that you put in some numbers. So if we add a bond, we want to pull hydrogen, right? That's a good point. So it's good that one thing that would make that clear is to actually draw in the hidden hydrogens. So it's good that you're thinking about the hidden hydrogens, but we should actually draw those in. And it looks like we have to get rid of both of those. That's right. So we normally don't draw hidden hydrogens, but it's a good idea sometimes to draw hidden hydrogens on the carbons that are participating in the reaction. Obviously, if we drew all the hidden hydrogens on all the carbons, the diagram would be a mess. But it can really clarify things to draw in a couple of the hidden hydrogens well, on the reactive carbons. Oh, that'd be exciting. Maybe some <laughs> D2O. I don't know. I'm making things up. I know it's dehydrogenation, and there's some sort of thing that goes with that, but I don't remember what. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got the reference. It seems like water can pull off hydrogen. I mean, we've been pulling off hydrogens of water all along, right? They feel like they want to pull off hydrogen. You mean like this? Yeah, because it was charged though. That's the key. That's why we always say that the charge is the most important part. Water is not very good at donating electrons. It can only donate electrons here because it's attacking something with a charge. So water is not going to just pull off a proton off of anybody, only somebody with a charge. And we can just eliminate. So we know it's not going to be B, it's not going to be H, not going to be L, not C, not G. Not why, are, why are you saying not these? I mean, I know you're right, but... Because these would add, yeah. like, if these would go and attack and add the okay. whole carbons, and we're not trying to add carbons. Yeah. This one would add an OH. Yeah, what do we want to do for anything? CR2 wouldn't work. Maybe you, you know, I was just wanting to solve it in one step. One step. But then all of them would break. I feel like all the ones you crossed out would. So I should all work together on this now? Yes. Right. <laughs> Please. Now, you did make some good steps here. One good thing you did is put in the numbers. That's good. Um, bond line notation for triple bonds can be very confusing to people. Oftentimes people forget that these are separate carbons. So putting in yeah. the numbers really helps us yeah. to see that we have the same number of carbons that we started with. So that might seem trivial, but that can save us from a lot of mistakes as we go through this. Now, it's great that you saw that we were eliminating the hydrogens, although I think we ended up focusing on that too much. That didn't turn out to be the key. One thing that you didn't mention is that we're forming a new pi bond. I think that would have been, uh, it turns out to be more helpful here. We need to form a new pi bond. Well, we've kind of learned only one way to make pi bonds between two carbons. What, what, how have we learned to make pi bonds between two carbons? We just did it earlier today. I don't 
How do we form a new pi bond between two carbons? What type of reaction is that? We form new pi bonds by doing elimination reactions. That's right. That's why we wanted to get rid of the hydrogen. Yeah, that's right. So that'll be part of that. So um, by doing E1 or E2, usually E2. So if we could do an E2, we would be in good shape. Now, what do we need in order to do an E2? We need a base. We need a bulky base. That's excellent. But what else? And we need a good nucleophile. Well, actually, the base is, is the good nucleophile. Yeah, so although it's acting like a base. But we need the leaving group. group that we saw earlier. We need a leaving group. Well, do we have any leaving groups yet? No. Yeah. What, what's the most common type of leaving group we use in this course for elimination? Halogen. Halogens. That's right. <laughs> so the first thing we have to do is get the halogen in here. Mm. So, we do have so uh, earlier someone was saying it seems like we always start with the halogenation. And I said, no, no, that's not right. But uh, now it uh, looks like in this case we are putting in the halogen first. All right. So oftentimes we do start by putting in a halogen. Those are very useful to us. Um, so any ideas about how we might do that? How many eliminations do we need to do? Oh, we do need them on both sides, so we probably want Br2. Because we want Excellent. an H on both. We want an H replaced. Right. Yeah. One thing to notice is after we add the bromine, this won't be an alkene anymore. Right. Then we're going to have to do two eliminations. Yeah. All right. Well, we kind of figured it out. So what, so what should we put in? Br2. All right. Is it going to form that TB? Good. So that's another very important mechanism. So let's actually draw the mechanism for that. Is it bromonium? That's right. So let's actually draw the mechanism for how the bromine will attack. Oh, we didn't have a long table. I was looking at the one down here. Anyway, it's just PO2. Okay. So what are we doing? I'm trying to remember what is the mechanism by which the BR2 will attack the double bond. That is an important mechanism you're likely to be tested on. That's good. Although you actually didn't show the mechanism because the mechanism needs using electron pushing arrows to show how that's formed. But again, we should try not to just jump to the intermediate. We should draw the electron pushing arrows first, because the electron pushing arrows show us what's going to happen. Well, let me remind you about what happens here. What happens here is actually pretty complicated. The pi bond attacks one of the bromines at the same time as that same bromine attacks the other carbon and the other bromine leaves. This is actually quite a complicated mechanism. One of the bromines gets attacked by the pi bond at the same time as it uses a lone pair to attack the other carbon, and its bromine leaves. Oh, and then you get the Well, this bromine is losing two pairs of electrons and only gaining one, so it has to end up with a positive charge. So that would give us this intermediate. So it looks like this is one um, that you definitely want to um, practice, the mechanism for this halogenation. This first step is pretty complicated. The second step should be simpler. But notice, don't draw this first. Draw, you got to draw the arrows first and then draw the intermediate. 
next step. Doesn't really matter in this case which carbon the bromine attacks because they have about the same substitution. That's a good point, absolutely. Because we've got electronics here, we're going to form attack the one with more carbocation character. It's good at remembering that. But that's not an issue here because, well, it's not an issue here because we have two bromines anyway, so it doesn't matter who ends up where. 